Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our next speaker is working through the company communication manual, project number six, vocal variety. The objectives are to use voice, volume, pitch, rate, and quality to reflect and add meaning and interest to his message. Use pauses to enhance his message. Use vocal variety. Use vocal variety smoothly and naturally. Tonight, our, our speaker, wait, yeah, the objective of the speech is he, he will be sharing an experience from his childhood. Frank DeRoyer, a boy's life, a boy's life, Frank DeRoyer. April 1980. I was seven years old. Now, April each year was the culmination of anticipation and excitement associated with none other than the beginning of Major League Baseball season. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, as an adult, I enjoy baseball, but at seven years old, I was consumed by baseball. During recesses at school, I would play baseball. If there was no one to play baseball with, I would throw the baseball against the wall or a tennis ball. During school, I would draw baseball fields, which might also explain why I didn't get very good grades in school. After school, I would play baseball with my friends until somebody got hit by the ball. Because at that point we knew it was probably too dark outside. When I couldn't play baseball for some reason, I read about baseball. I would study the previous day's box scores and memorize the statistics. I would read about baseball players from generations past and memorize their statistics too. Now, when I couldn't play baseball, when I couldn't read about baseball, I like to watch baseball on TV. Now, the problem with watching baseball on TV as a seven-year-old is I had the attention span of a flea. And for those of you who are unaware, the flea has a very short attention span. <laughs> so what I had to do in order to get through a whole game of baseball on TV, I would have to maintain my activity level. And one way I did that was pretending I was the hitter. So the pitcher would be on TV and I would pretend I was the hitter. Now, that was neat, but after a while, it kind of got boring. So I decided, hey, here's a great idea. I could incorporate a real baseball bat into that. That way, it would be a little more interesting and it would help my baseball swing. So in our TV room, there was a sofa, and about five or six feet in front of us was an end table, kind of Victorian style, about this high, four post, that my parents used as a TV stand. Think 1980s, 19-inch RCA TV. <laughs> now, it was April of 1980, and I was excited. Baseball season was beginning, and it was the first game I could watch of the Dodgers season that year. And Burt Hooten was pitching. And I was ready to hit off Burt Hooten. So I reached under the sofa surreptitiously where I hit my bat because for some reason, swinging a bat in the house was frowned upon. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> so I got the baseball bat. He threw that pitch. I had a sweet rotation of the hips, kept my hands inside the ball, rolled my wrist, and made this solid contact. Oh, man, that thing flew. I just watched it hit the wall. Man, I was didn't know whether to be excited or nervous because, unfortunately, I didn't hit an imaginary ball. I hit one of the legs of the TV stand, end table. And like I said, hit that thing on the line. It went flying right into the wall. Unfortunately, it was the wall six feet away in our TV room. <laughs> Now, 
I'm not sure why, but the crack of the bat, aluminum bat against a thick wooden leg, and then the thud shortly thereafter of the leg against the wall, for some unknown reason, piqued my mom's interest. <laughs> she comes running into the room. Her timing was impeccable, impeccable. She got there just in time to watch the TV stand list toward the missing leg and the TV slide off and fall to the ground. <laughs> My mom's stare at the TV was piercing and I slowly dropped the bat. Because at seven years old I thought, hey, maybe a robber came in and destroyed the TV stand and the TV. My mom was way too astute for my seven-year-old chicanery. <laughs> she was angry, and rightfully so. She should have been angry. But what I didn't understand is why that anger lasted for days and what seemed like weeks. Because at the end of the day, it worked out. The TV stand, my dad fixed it. Sure, it didn't have that out-of-the-store look, more the lived-in, been through World War II look, you know, it was still functional. <laughs> the TV, when it slid off the TV stand, the cord, electrical cord, tightened, and it minimized the impact into the ground. The TV still worked. I mean, okay, the reception was never as good, even with the rabbit ears, you never could quite get the same quality, but it was a TV from 1980. It didn't have very high quality to begin with. And finally, the hole in the wall I put, I created by creating a projectile out of that TV stand leg. My dad spackled it. Oh, the wonders of spackle. He spackled it. <laughs> and my mom used it as an opportunity to paint that room this awful lavender color. It made me want to throw up every time I walked in there thereafter. Now, I thought my mom did that to punish me, but that really wasn't the case. I learned some valuable lessons from this experience. One was forgiveness. My mom forgave me. Thank you, mom. I also learned the folly of making absolute <coughs> statements. For example, when my dad was painting that lavender on the walls, I said to myself, there's no way, no way I would ever, ever have a room in my house painted lavender. Only 17 years later, when, my, when I acquiesced my wife to paint our room bedroom lavender, <laughs> did I find the folly in that. And just for the record, there are some important days in my life. Two of those are the day I got married and the day we painted over that lavender with a more masculine beige. <laughs> now finally, I learned the lesson that I should not swing a bat in the house, but throwing a baseball in the house, whole another story. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>